Hi, this is Dr. Justin here, and today's talk is going to be on gluten, the truth about gluten. We're going to break it down. We're going to talk about where you're getting exposed to gluten from. And again, gluten sensitivity is very, very common these days. We're going to break that down as well. So again, gluten tends to be a detriment to most people's health because it causes leaky gut. So when we look at gluten issues, the typical definition of being gluten sensitive is, is, a, is celiac disease. That's essentially, essentially an autoimmune condition that affects the small intestine, the microvilli, and we have an autoimmunity where the villi are being attacked and are being shortened at least 80% for a classification of celiac disease, an autoimmune process. And we'll typically see transglutaminase or endomycial antibodies along with that, which are actually doing the destruction. So again, everyone that has celiac disease is gluten sensitive, but not everyone that is gluten sensitive has celiac disease. That is the problem. So we have this giant iceberg here, and the top of the iceberg, again, is celiac disease. You know, the, the bigger piece of the iceberg is being underneath, and that's kind of your, your non-celiac gluten sensitive individual. So that's kind of the new phenomenon we hear of today, non-celiac gluten sensitive, meaning you're still, your immune system is still reacting to gluten even though you don't have the classification of celiac disease. I've seen many of my patients after a consult with them that go see their conventional medical doctor and their medical doctor says after we put them on a gluten diet saying well, this is a waste, you aren't celiac, you don't have a gluten problem, yet they feel better. So again, the gold standard of figuring out if you are gluten sensitive, there are lab tests you can do. The gold standard is an elimination provocation diet, pulling it out, seeing how you feel, and you can always add it back in. For some people, I don't recommend it because the autoimmune disaster that may occur could cause irrevocable damage. So again, um, recap there, we really want to find out who has gluten issues. And again, most medical doctors are still under the overall umbrella that, hey, you're only gluten sensitive if you have celiac disease, but we have this new umbrella now, the bigger part of the iceberg, it's the non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So now with that being laid out, let's look at the constituents. We have wheat, barley, and rye. These are our typical gluten-containing grains. So if you see a, a gastroenterologist, they're gonna recommend you avoid these grains. These are your typical gluten-containing gluten, gluten -containing grains. Now again, the main protein, main protein in gluten is gliadin. So when we say you're gluten sensitive, really what we're saying is you're gliadin sensitive, but no one says it that way. So wheat, barley, and rye are the main ones. Now with oats, we tend to have cross-reactivity or Essentially, um, the, the truck that drove to the farm to get the wheat last week actually went in and got the oats this week. So we have some reaction due to exposure. And again, oats are still an issue with most people. Even if it's certified Bob's Red Mill gluten-free oats, it still may be a problem because some of these grains are so similar that the immune system is in a heightened state and will still react to it as if it's gluten. Again, corn's another one. And we look at all grains, they share a similar family of prolamines. And basically gluten is kind of an overarching, is, is within the overarching umbrella of prolamines. If we look at prolamine content in grains, we're gonna see wheat, barley and rye, and corn being the highest, but we'll still see oats in there, we'll still see um, amaranth, we'll still see sorghum, we'll still see other grains with higher level of prolamine content. Now again, we'll see rice. Rice has much lower level of prolamine content at 5%. So if you're wanting to incorporate a grain and you've already been gluten sensitive or gluten free for a while, gliadin free, the first grain you may want to introduce is rice. But my biggest thing is you are not really gluten free unless you are grain free. That's why the prolamines that are in each can still cause a cross reactivity. So we really want to cut out all grains. But rice is the lowest out of all the prolamine content. It's at 5% while these are upwards of 50 to 80%. Now I threw in milk here, so we talked about this whole idea of cross-reactivity. We see it with the grains, but we also see it with some other things such as milk and whey protein. Uh, we may even see it with buckwheat. We may even see it with eggs too. Eggs, again, if you're autoimmune, I strongly recommend an AIP type of protocol, an autoimmune paleo type of diet for at least 30 days where you really cut out the milk, where you cut out all grains, and you may even want to cut out eggs if you're autoimmune as well. So I'm gonna write AIP there so everyone knows what that means. 
So again, recap here. These are the big gluten-containing grains. We want to cut those out. Ideally, we want to be 100% grain-free. And if you have autoimmune conditions, we can always cut out the milk, the dairy, and the eggs for an extra 30 days and add them back in. Again, the gold standard is still an elimination, provocation type of diet. Pulling the foods out, adding them back in, seeing how you look, feel, and perform. So again, when we look at gluten, we have various constituents here. So gliadin is the main protein here. Now, the problem with a lot of conventional testing is they look at various epitopes of gliadin. One of the major epitopes is alpha, is alpha gliadin. And they run various tests to assess that. The problem is there is also beta gliadin. There's also gamma and omega. So the problem is if you're only looking at this one epitope, there's a great chance that other ones may be missed. And again, if you cut gluten out of your diet for up to six months, you may never even test positive anyway. And I've seen people where they've cut it off for six months, they feel so good, and now their gastroenterologist saying, is, well, we have to have you, you know, challenge that and add those grains back in, but they know that if they add it back in, they may, they, they may be sick for over a week, and they're scared about that. So again, the elimination provocation should be your gold standard. If you've pulled it out in the past and added it back in and you've already had reactions, more than likely you are sensitive to it and it still may not show up in your conventional um, endoscopy where you trim off a, a villus piece. So again, lectins. Lectins are other compounds that are found in gluten, in grains in general. They can be gut irritating. They can create gut inflammation. They also can have things attached to it such as phytates and oxalates. These are mineral binding compounds that can bind up to minerals. So we have oxalates and phytates, and these compounds can create malabsorptions. They can bind up to zinc, bind up to magnesium, and decrease the body's ability to absorb those minerals. So very important, we wanna make sure that you're absorbing the food. So when we look at the, the nutritional content in grains, it really isn't that good. If you compare it to organ meats, if you compare it to good quality fish or good quality organic vegetables, especially vegetables that are cooked, a lot of times the fiber in these vegetables have, have these lectin or these compounds that prevent the absorption from happening. If we cook them up, we, we absorb them much better. But same thing with grains, is this, pre this prevents our body's ability from absorbing these nutrients. And when you look at grains already, they already don't have good nutrient content. If you look at them across the board, I'll try to put something on the screen so we can actually compare um, grain nutrients. But they really aren't that good. And then when we add in the lectins, we're going to lower that ability to even have more nutrients because we can't absorb it. And if we already have the gliadin over here creating inflammation and other constituents off to the right, and then we add in the lectins, we're already going to be lower and lower and lower. So it's not a nutrient dense food. All the nutrient dense foods that I recommend, they have to fit into three criteria. Nutrient dense, anti-inflammatory, and low in toxins. And this is what I consider a toxin. Now we look at wheat germ agglutinin. Wheat germ agglutinin is another compound uh, that's a part of gluten. And it can be incredibly gut irritating. It can create leaky gut. And leaky gut's the big thing when we look at with gluten here. When we have leaky gut, our gastrointestinal um, tight junctions are like this. When we tighten them up, or when we eat gluten and we actually create a weakening of those tight junctions, they start coming apart and then individual food particles can poke through and create immune responses in the bloodstream. And again, that immune recross reactivity with gluten is very, very prominent. So FODMAPs. So FODMAPs are, they basically are specific kinds of sugars that are found in the grain. So they stand for fructo, oligo, disaccharide, mono, and polyols. And these sugars can create gastric distress and there's actually some information out there in the blogging world that some people, they're really not gluten sensitive, they're just FODMAP sensitive. So I've had great results cutting FODMAPs out of patients' diets that have gastrointestinal issues and seeing things totally clear up. So this possibility that some of these people maybe are just more FODMAP sensitive than gliadin sensitive, well, that's a kind of a toss up. I mean, I've definitely seen people, for instance, when we cut all the grains and such out and they 
don't, they don't do 100% better. And then we cut out specific foods that are higher in FODMAPs and then they improve. So it's kind of a toss up, but it's something that you should keep, out, keep in the back of your mind that it could be a FODMAP issue. And some of the benefit for some people may be from the FODMAPs and not necessarily from the gliadin. If we can't break down FODMAPs, we're gonna have dysbiosis and fermentation and putrefaction in the gut. We may have gas and bloating because of it. And last but not least is mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are specific fungal toxins. Myco means fungal, toxin is toxin. And these mycotoxins is very strong constituent, very strong toxic constituent that are found in grains. Um, again, these grains will sit there, they'll, they'll you know, be wet and moist, and they will literally produce fungus from it. And it's a high amount of fungus is found in grains. We so really want to make sure that you are avoiding grains, especially if you are sensitive to mycotoxins. Now, mycotoxins are one of these things where many, many people are sensitive to it and they just don't even know. And again, we see it in coffee, we see it in uh, beans, um, we see it in grains, and we also see it in peanuts too. So these toxins can create leaky gut, they can create gastrointestinal disturbance, and they're a stress on the liver. You know, it ends in toxins, so that is definitely going to be creating some hepatotoxic stress. So recap here, gliadin is definitely a problem, lectins, wheat germ and FODMAPs, and mycotoxins. These are all stressors to our body. Again, the food is not nutrient dense. There are a great deal of toxins in grains and gluten containing foods, and they are not anti-inflammatory, they're actually pro-inflammatory. But if you do want to have a grain, your best bet would be to go with a nice white rice because of its low lectin compound, low lectin content. Brown rice will have a higher amount of lectins in there. That's why white rice tends to do a lot better. So I hope this information was helpful. For more information, um, check out my YouTube video link below. Feel free and subscribe. Subscribe to my newsletter and also check out the websites below for more great free information. And if you're having a hard time healing your leaky gut and getting over your gluten sensitivity, feel free and schedule a consult below. Thanks. This is Dr. Justin signing out.